Today, I'm ex hope Today, I hope you're excited to join me on a dive into a little drawing with waffles history. In my hands, I hold the only ever made copy of the physical Volume K Issue 1 Magna Girl comic. Now, some of you, if you've been around a while, may have read it. It is for free on the internet. It's linked in the description, but this is the physical copy. I think I made a couple changes before I posted it online. Um, but yeah, I thought I would uh, read it to you. I don't know. Let me just take a copy out of one of my old jokes as we reach in to grab this piece of history. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, a Zazzle box. Okay, there's a lot more in here than I realized. Oh, okay. I remember these. The rest looks like it's garbage. These were character sheets I made. Why am I wearing gloves? They're supposed to be a joke, like you're like digging in through the relics, you know? It's not that funny. Anyway, these are a couple character sheet cards I made because I thought like, oh, if I sell it, I want there to be cute little freebies so that like if someone wants to draw the characters or whatever. So for some reason I thought Magna Girl's mom would be a fun one. And then obviously we have Magna Girl. So like I listed all the colors, a few notes, some characters that you will see when I read the comic and a little bit more information about her mom as well. Oh, and there's her dad, Treble, Treble. Why did I say it? Oh, Trevor! <laughs> From Iron Man 3, Trevor, Trevor Schlattery. But yeah, on the back it just says the Magna Girl logo with character sheet. <laughs> it says printed in limited quantity, excessively limited. But there's the date, 2017. Oh my gosh. I really like the colors. They're fun and pastel and babyish. So that's it in there. And here we have the comic. Oh my gosh. Still in its original packaging. Actually, I've pulled it out quite a few times. I just keep it in there. These were some notes that I believe I had on the page ages to correct to the digital file. What else is in here? Let me just take a look at this first and then we'll get into the comic. I guess I was practicing another one of my character's signatures. There's something in here. Oh, it's Nathan and Arlene. Mm, oh, we got some more Roswell stuff. So, wow, <laughs> the amount of detail in this. I didn't realize I used to do that. <laughs> Though this is one of my famous. <laughs> Purple pen sketches. I feel like I drew this at work. Yes, I did. Gotta be careful what I show that can has the address of my previous employment. But uh, there you go. Look at that. This is 2016. This is even older. What? Time just slowed down for a second. But yeah, all purple pen sketches on a very slow day at work. Oh, the memories. Oh, here's another one. Is this from work as well? Oh, I remember working this. This was a Saturday and I was behind the stand and we had sticky notes there for some reason. It wasn't a usual occurrence, but I was able to fix some old drawings. Oh my gosh, the original face. <laughs> I think the new one is an improvement. Okay, again. This is not Magna Girl at all, but I hope you're enjoying these. Is this another work? Yes, this one is, oh, actually a week and a half earlier. I really like this pose. Hers a little iffy. Someone's yelling, they're getting away. And then we have Nathan saying, I have got to be completely honest. This is entirely my fault. And then Arlene says, I appreciate the honesty, Nathan, but I might take it a step further and ask, when is it not your fault? More purple pen sketches. This one, I really, really like though. That one, that one holds up. Oh, shoot. That's all private information. Okay, we're all good now. <laughs> all right. I don't know how to describe how it feels to have something you made in your hand. It's kind of why I've like switched to doing a little bit more traditional art lately, even though digital art is like my bread and butter. I've just, I've wanted to feel something physical and make it with my hands. <laughs> that sounded weird. Now I need to give you a fair warning and listen good. I'm gonna be giving a lot of commentary about the art because it was a major part of my life. It took a lot of time and I just wanna, you know, geek out about it. So if you actually wanna just read the story, I will have a link in the description. Check out the comic, read it that way, and then maybe come back and find out the behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, it's gonna be really frustrating if you just wanna know what's going on because I'm gonna get really distracted. I'm just gonna say it right now. And for those of you who have read the comic and don't care about the commentary, at the end of the video, I'm going to jump into some behind the scenes art and kind of show you what was supposed to happen in the next issue because I almost completed it and it's just sitting on my computer. So I thought I would show you. So if you're excited about that, stay tuned. Let's jump into the comic. So this is the cover as you've been looking at. I remember spending about a few days drawing this background and I think it holds up. As you can tell, it's stairs. Not exactly the easiest thing to draw. This comic like taught me so much about backgrounds and I cheated a lot in these backgrounds and we'll get to that. I like to actually curve a lot of my lines 
lines now, but I think the straight lines really help make this look legit. And I'm still pretty proud of that background. But on the cover here, we've got our girl Maggie, also known as Magna Girl. She is our future superhero and firepower extraordinaire. If you don't know why she gets firepowers, it's kind of a lame power, but now I can't change it because it's so integral to the story. But the reason she has firepowers is because originally I couldn't draw hands. I hated drawing hands. And every time I drew hands, they just looked like a ball with pokies. And I thought that looks like a fireball. So I decided it was a fireball and thus our fireball girl. Anyway, that's Maggie. And then back here we have Maple. At the time she was my YouTube channel's mascot actually. And it's funny because a lot of people have been asking me lately, I've noticed, uh, to draw a character based off of a waffle. So like do a human, humanified human what is how do you say that a human version of a waffle and she was exactly that i designed her based off of a waffle she was a lot older the outfit kind of like was boxed out kind of like a waffle and the colors were the channel colors purple and yellow yeah she was my waffle girl she was named maple you know after maple syrup it all kind of made sense but for the comic i thought it would be cool to like integrate her into the first issue as kind of like a little mesh between the youtube channel and my story but i de-aged her quite a bit here she is five years old and then we have the title someone needs to teach you some manners not just having like stuff on the stairs made it feel a little less sterile so those were kind of added in last minute then you can kind of see upstairs that's actually her parents bedroom and then there's like a bathroom right here and then maggie's room is around this way and i know that because i made her entire house in the sims yeah so i know the layout very very well and it was very helpful for drawing the backgrounds as i will say in the future here. All right, so when we open the page, we get the, I don't know what do you call this, the title page. And then here on the left, it was just blank. So I put in a little concept art that I had at the time. I drew this when I think it was the 2016 Olympics were going on. So I always imagined that uh, they were staying up late to watch the Olympics because she would have kind of an early bedtime. Her mom's a bit of like a control freak. So I feel like <laughs> she would have her children have one of those like seven o'clock bedtimes. I thought she would make exceptions for the Olympics. And then this is just like a repeat of the picture before because I was so proud of it. All right, and then we get into the comic. I'm still quite proud of how like dreary and gray these scenes look compared to like this or the rest of the comic, which is bright and cheerful and like, I don't know, baby colors <laughs> because it's following a baby. So this scene is supposed to be like near the end of the Magna Girl arc. She's significantly older at this time and we're having a press conference after a very huge event, but we don't know what that event is. So there's this sort of like mysterious guy giving his little press conference with the media. Yeah, you'll find he's quite interesting indeed. And so what he's saying, is recent events have disturbed my complacency. Are we all so blinded by our own pride, oblivious to our errors? We all perceive we are doing the right thing, that we are heroes. But what really makes a hero? Are they born? Are they made? Or are they even given a choice in the matter? <laughs> it jumps to the news reporter. Yeah, but like, where is she? Why hasn't she made any public appearances since March 27th? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> she hasn't been feeling herself lately. And then you can see this man has a butt ton of rings. Like you wouldn't be able to move your fingers without them like. He has a lot of rings with lots of different gemstones. And he's actually, in these two fingers, he has an extra ring that he's not wearing, which was intentional. I remember being so proud of this like spread here where I have like the two photos on top of a newspaper and then the wood texture and then the little coffee wet cup ring and then the cell phone. And I really liked the way it went from like boxes of action to like looking at a desk. And then this, this newspaper in the back, I literally only added it because it didn't really look like these were picture frames. It looked like they are pictures, photos. <laughs> it kind of just looked like it was more of these boxes, but they were kind of just angled funny. So I added in the newspaper and like the wood texture and the stain. This newspaper article does say something kind of vaguely describing what happened, but I just specifically made it so you can't really tell. But you can see cool keywords like ball of massive ball of fire, bad news, you know, all those cool words. <laughs> and then with this one, I made it like an Instagram post of someone took of Magna Girl downtown and they doesn't look like something that's happening. So yeah, this is our little future thing. And then we take a step back to the past to get to know our hero. <laughs> so a significant amount of time earlier, we show Maggie's house. We hear coming from the house in Maggie's second floor bedroom. This is actually a really freaking big house. I'm just thinking, but anyway. <laughs> I said, knock it off. So here we have introduction. Maggie 
and maple. I really, 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 really like this panel. I just love this face. I love the tiny little mouth. I like Maggie picking a maple, picking her nose. So cute. Anyway, then we look from ground level and we have her two toys wrestling and flailing on the ground. Now you'll notice uh, further into this comic that any time that there's white action lines with a blue stroke that it's their imagination or a memory so they're imagining that this is happening there's just some notes here this stuff's all fixed i believe in the digital version so maggie picks the two toys up i'm sorry maple they're usually more nice maggie replies it's okay i see more bad stuff on tv maggie or <laughs> See, this was a problem. They both have very similar names. Anyway, Maggie continues. We should teach them manners. And then we can say that we teach them manners. When someone asks us why they have good manners, who teach them? We can say it was me and Maggie. We teach them. So basically I'm trying to emphasize that these are children and that's how children talk. So they talk really, really fast. They don't wait for themselves to catch their own breath. It's really cute. It does not work in a comic panel, but I tried. Anyway, then <laughs> Maggie asks, or Maggie says, you are so smart, you must be good at math. Maple replies, thanks. I can count to nine, actually. So I like purposely tried to like break down their words to how they would pronounce it. And I tried to make really weird correlations that I thought children might make. Maybe it's a little crazy at times, but I was having so much fun with this. <laughs> I really can't hate on myself. So here we go back into some imagination. We use that same blue color. Maggie is telling a story and she says, when mommy taught me manners, we had a tea party, please. And she's holding a plate of cookies. Had to say please if I wanted a cookie. And thank you if I didn't want her to eat it right out of my hands. Well, there's her mom eating the cookie. <laughs> she said it was good manners. <laughs> I love that face. You can kind of see the teapot. Then Maple adds in a memory of her watching TV with her mother. It says, more tea? Yes, please. Thank you. You are most welcome, Louisa. Maple. In mommy's TV shows, all the fancy mommies with good manners are always drinking out of their tea party cups. So she agrees with this idea about a tea party teaching the kids toys manners. <laughs> Maggie's super excited about this, so she adds, We can teach my toys good manners just like my mommy did, and then they won't fight just like in your mommy's TV shows. Maple's ready for this. <laughs> Let's teach these toys some manners. You can kind of see there's some discrepancies of like line art size, which you might not have noticed at first, but it shows a lot to me at this point in time in my life. Let me show you this panel. You might be able to tell that this was a kitchen made in The Sims. I actually would like angle the camera in The Sims to the right angle for the, each panel. And then I would use the little screenshot feature so that I had the kitchen in that angle so that I could draw it. Occasionally I would like trace out the basics of the line, turn it off and then add in any details. So now we've jumped downstairs. I don't know if it's obvious, but we have Polly, which is Maggie's mom, talking to her friend. I've already picked out Maggie's outfit for school tomorrow. It's crazy. The photo I take tomorrow is gonna to be the one I share online in 12 years side by side with her last first day of school. <laughs> then her friend says, I don't even wanna think about being mom of a teenager. A five-year-old and an eight-month-old are more than I can handle. Still can't get Maple to do chores around the house. She falls on the ground, becomes limp whenever I ask her to do anything. How'd you say you got Maggie to help you around the house? Holly replies, I told you, Rachel, I found her weakness. Quite fond of that frame as well. So now we're at, I put a bigger gap here to kind of like show a break in where we were looking, kind of like a scene cut. I think you're supposed to like go to another page when you do that, but clearly I did not. I don't know if that's a rule you have to follow. <laughs> Just different things I was learning at the time. So we've got Maggie and Maple coming down the stairs. Maple's holding a teapot now and uh, Maggie is continuing. All we have to do is fill this teapot with water. I don't like tea. It's blacky, but mom has some juice packets in the pantry. That way we can have yummy tea that isn't yucky. And then she looks down at the bottom of the stairs. Holy socks! Down at the bottom of the stairs, we see Maggie's favorite toy, her Gigi doll. And we use those same colors here, kind of do the imagination. So the toy is screaming, help. And then we show Gigi and she says, please, my boyfriend is in trouble. He can't get down from the fan. There's a minefield. And we get a close up of Maggie. Don't worry, Gigi, I got this. That's another of my favorite panels because we have Maple a little confused because she can't, she can't see what she sees, I would say. I find it more 
fun to like starting to draw new boxes all the time because it's like, oh, it's a different picture. It's a different picture. It's a different picture. This one was like all one. So you can kind of see like the influence of having that reference of the layout and then adding in the furniture. Anyway, in the panel, we have Maggie running around her, I guess, living room, picking up all the toys, disabling the minefield, if you will, fluffing the <laughs> cushions, dumping all the toys into her chest, her toy chest, I guess. And then she leans up against the couch, staring straight up at the fan. Mission report, minefield disabled. Now, how do I save the victim? <laughs> Maple's still not amused. So we cut to a scene behind Maggie. She flicks the switch for the fan. It begins spinning the toy. <laughs> Gigi's boyfriend goes flying. Maggie catches it. It has now been cut. <laughs> oh, no need to thank me. Just doing my chores. Maggie, what about our tea party, remember? Shakes the teapot. <gasps> Oops, sorry, I forgot. I feel like I should write that a little differently. <laughs> it could very easily be mispronounced. <laughs> and even pronounced correctly sounds a little wrong. But I also really like this um, frame with like the tiny little girls and then the close-ups of the adults. And we got Holly drinking her coffee or whatever. I also just really like Holly's design, which is probably why I got it printed on a card. <laughs> so then the little girls are circling around to the back around the sink. Gigi's boyfriend is always getting into all sorts of trouble. Once I found him drowning in a laundry basket and mom and I had all my clean clothes as fast as we could just to save his life. Maple, wow, Gigi's boyfriend is clumsy. Back to the parents. <laughs> Aspen is so cute. Can I hold him now? Only if you promise to have another kid. I need you to get fat so I can feel better about myself. My life is far too hectic for a baby right now. Maggie's starting school and my fashion blog. And fine, you can't hold Aspen. <laughs> Still not sure about that joke, but I feel like it shows their personalities very well. Back to the children. Maggie's bossing Maple around. Maple, grab the juice packets. They're in the pantry. No, the other pantry. And then Holly starts to interject. You girls look like you're having fun. What you up to? Can't tell, Mommy. It's top secret. She gets that from her father. I can never get a straight answer out of that man. I love how in the background you can kind of see them doing their thing. And then when you're looking at what they're doing, you can see what the adults are doing in the background. Considering the way Trevor looks in a suit, really wouldn't complain. So then we have them ripping open the juice packet and putting it into the tea kettle, which is now full of water. They've finished the job. How do you read a comic to someone? This is so difficult. Anyway, Maggie says, if we hurry, we can teach those toys some manners before dinner. Maple's super excited and she just sings tea party, tea party, tea party. And she's continuing, tea party, tea party. <laughs> but from off frame or off screen, off frame, out of frame, I don't know. From out of frame, we have Holly yelling, Maggie, hurry, Gigi's boy. Boyfriend's in trouble. Maggie. Oh, that mister. That's another good panel I like. You can kind of see again, we've got like the dining room over there, the front door, the stairs. I'm really proud of just knowing the layout of the building. I think it really helps when doing backgrounds because then you can kind of cheat like this one or I'm like, okay, it's just stairs that are gonna be in front of her. So all I have to do is just kind of draw the color of the stairs and blur it. And it's gonna look like she's in front of the stairs. Anyway, she says, oh, that mister. Hold this, but remember, both hands. And she gives it to Maple, who's a little irritated by this uh, inconvenience. I don't think I like Gigi's boyfriend very much. Back to the kitchen. The toys have now been rearranged in a very precarious position. And Holly says, hurry, he's about to trip. You better wipe up that water before he slips and cracks his head open. This is another really good face. Very proud of that one. I also like how Maple is in the back and she's like, this is stupid. Anyway, this was my first attempt at like an action scene. We've got Maggie running. Whoosh. Close up of Maggie running. Again, another really great panel that I like. She kicks <laughs> with a kick the stool. It goes flying. Hits the edge of the counter with a chunk. She jumps up. Whoosh. She lands on the stool and she <laughs> stands on her tippy toes <laughs> and yells, gotcha. And it says here to remove mister. So it just says gotcha. You guys deceive you. You two need to be more careful. I'll try my best not to leave spills like this, but I won't always be here to save you. Maple, don't you want to help Maggie save Gigi's boyfriend? Wink, wink. Clean scrub. Looks like work, not fun. Moment of realization. <gasps> <gasps> I love the adults attempt to like get Maple <laughs> to help do a little something something outside of playing and it just does not work. 
<laughs> as you will see here. Maple continues to throw a tantrum. She stomps her foot on the ground, drops the teapot. It's falling. Maggie's cleaning. Maggie notices this occurrence. She's gone in a flash. The teapot is now falling. We see her mother saying seriously every time. We see Holly worried about her floors. The teapot continues to fall. Baby Aspen clapping away, enjoying the chaos. I'm actually really proud of this one too. I like that you can see Maple in the background. This like mouth where she's just screaming. But I like grade it out to push it like really far into the background and I think it works pretty well. Then jumping from her stool, catching the teapot in the last possible second, saved. And then the top like clinks back down in a fourth. We do like a wide overhead shot, unintelligent screaming coming from Maple. Maggie's still on the floor and she does her nice quip, her superhero quip. I told you Maple, both hands. Continued chaos onto the next page. Now Aspen's screaming from the commotion. Maple's still throwing her tantrum. Her mom says, well Holly, it was worth a shot. Holly, I guess Maple's weakness doesn't have anything to do with heroics. And the phone begins to ring. This was really cool. I like how we have this frame and they're very obviously like the same frame, but they're broken up so that you read it and it's, it's very easy to kind of see what's going on, you know? So we got her phone ringing in her pocket. She picks up. Hey Trevor, what's up babe? Back to the kids. Maple, come on, let's go. She's still throwing her tantrum. I love how the nose just like continue in the background. She drops her leg or her arm actually and it floops onto the floor. She's gone total limp baby. <laughs> so this part, this page is like even more kind of chaotic. <laughs> so we've got a conversation on the phone where you're only hearing one side of it as well as the kids talking to each other here. So you hear the mom on the phone saying, Sharon, Sharon and, and Colin, that's horrible. We see the screaming of the baby. We have the no, no, no of Maple. And then we have Maggie saying, Maple, how will we teach the toys manners if we, uh, if we don't have our tea party? Continuing on the phone, where's Kieran? Baby screaming, Maggie. Come on, we have to go. You're so heavy. Before they ugh, start fighting again. No, 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 no. Continuing on the phone. Okay, Trevor. Maple finally <laughs> says something. No, I don't want to help Gigi's boyfriend. I want to have a tea party. The phone, whatever you think he needs. And then it kind of like breaks off. You kind of see the little squiggle that follows the phone conversation kind of like fizzles off after that. And Maggie, that's what we're trying to do scene from inside Maggie's bedroom. We're almost there, Maple. Just hang on. I love how like seriously she's taking all this. Like the seed of events just seems so minuscule, let's say. And yet somehow for these kids, it's like action packed. That's what I really enjoyed about this was taking like a slice of life and kind of giving it the smallest hint of like story. And then obviously you've got like something super depressing happening in the background with the adults, but the kids are very oblivious. I don't know. I really enjoy writing that. <laughs> anyway, she opens the door with a creak. Maple is still throwing a tantrum. <laughs> Maggie drops Maple onto the ground, runs to her little tea party set and begins filling the cups with the tea. The tea party now properly set up. Maggie says, Maple, check it out, a tea party. She looks up, realizes there's a tea party. <laughs> I love tea parties all the time sometimes. I don't like that face. That we can just, I don't like that one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Maple continues. Get ready to learn some manners, you toys. And then the toys looks back at her in a gulp. <laughs> Now the kids are having their little tea party. Uh-uh-uh, say the magic word. Alakazam, good job. And I specifically like connected the little thought bubbles together. So they're kind of like on the same page here. It's working, keep using your manners. Sips daintily, does as well. Please, thank you. <gasps> Tui. <laughs> I like this whole page, it's very cute. I like how the carpeting of her bedroom kind of extends the entire page just to give it color, even though it's only really happening up there. I like the little sunset coming in through the window a little bit as the sun begins to set. Anyway, they spit out their tea because they are incredulous because <gasps> That's a mommy and daddy word. Maggie lifts both her toys out of their chairs and looks at them disagreeingly. You two stare at the corner and think about what you did. <laughs> They're now put in the little plastic baby chair. <laughs> I feel just like mommy. 
So now at this point, Maple's mom comes in through the bedroom door. She asks, how did the tea party go, girls? And before they can answer, unfortunately, it's time for Maple to go home. What? So originally I had this as like a big scream, but I decided to put it in a thought bubble instead or a speech bubble because I just prefer it that way. Anyway, then she goes into tantrum mode. No, 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 no. This now triggers the baby. Wah! The mom. Ugh. Hashtag mom life. I don't know why I had that. Thought it was funny. Next page. Maggie, your your mom wants to talk to you downstairs. So the background, there's just a bunch of no, 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 no. I think I made that a little darker in the final because it wasn't quite as legible as it needed to be. It is like a background element, but it also needs to show the chaos of what's happening because of all the screaming and just the loudness. Anyway, her mom's a little upset and she says, Maple, say goodbye to Maggie. Maple, no. <laughs> Maple, this is really not the time for this. Wait, you said we'd stay at Maggie's until after dinner. As they storm out of the room. I really like the like sort of like limp body that she's like holding on her hip while holding this much younger child. And then as she turns around, she's still kind of like flomped in that direction. I think that's funny. Anyway, on to the next page. Uh, they're, they've now left the room. They're going downstairs. Maggie says, uh, we can teach the bad toys good manners next time, okay? No, 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 no. Maggie follows them kind of downstairs, slightly behind. Bye, Maple. The death stare here. <laughs> so things are kind of calming down. They've left. I probably should have added a frame where like the door closes and then it's silence just because of how loud it's been up until this point to kind of show the contrast. But this does a pretty good idea of that because we have Maggie coming around the corner here into the kitchen again. But this time we have the glow coming from the window to kind of show the passage of time. It's a little bit more gold instead of bright. She says, mommy, and she sees something is wrong. Are you okay? To be kind. Continue. So that is the end. There's not another page, but I do have the end or the back side of this where I just did a little description where it says raising a hero. Join Maggie Reese and her friend Maple as they spend their last day of freedom before beginning their 12 year enslavement to what is known by many as school. Throughout the day, they attempt to teach their toys manners, host a tea party, save some lives and clean a few messes. Will events beyond Maggie's control shake the lives of the entire Reese family and even bring Maggie one step closer to becoming a hero? How's that for copy? <laughs> and there it is. That's the comic. I remember being so excited to have this in my hand. But yeah, it's just a nice little simple thing spent, I don't know, I think it took me at least a month to make this. Just doing nights after work and then also making YouTube videos at the time, which I don't think is too bad. But I just realized making comics wasn't really for me. I enjoyed the making, but like I just realized I didn't really enjoy reading comics as much as like watching movies or reading books. Once I realized that, it made it extremely difficult to work on my own comic because it was like, I think I'd rather do something else with this. But I didn't realize that till halfway through the next issue. So for all of you who are interested in what's up with Maggie's mom, what the heck's going on in the background, we do delve deeper into that in the next issue, which I will show you the thumbnails now over on my computer. Hey, welcome to my computer. So this is my very old 2016 file of Magna Girl stuff. Uh, you can see we've got some uh, creative concept art trying to figure out the lankiness of the character <laughs> there's actually some really cute stuff in here that i don't remember got maple in like a panda costume <laughs> and maggie in like a store-bought superhero costume uh, we got them with their legs tied together i don't know doing that like three-leggy thing this one's really cute this one's even cuter <laughs> <laughs> this actually is even older. This is when her story was completely different. We won't get into that, but like, yeah, this is all different, but like, this is kind of still the same. I don't know. It's crazy how stories develop over time and like the things you keep and the things you change. There's like other stuff in here, I think. I don't want to find anything too sad like that. <laughs> I actually, I'm not entirely sure where the thumbnails are. I don't know where it is. Oh, there was a concept for an original cover. Ooh, older. Some color ideas. Oh, it's probably in one of these folders. Why don't we go in here? Oh, we got the toys here in. Oh, this is way later story stuff. <gasps> oh, this is cute. <gasps> See, I said later in the story it was supposed to get a little more action packed. Now you know. <laughs> Shadow snakes. Okay, I'm getting distracted. This isn't... Oh, I can't show you that. That's too spoilery. Oh, but oh, I was... Maggie's so cute right here. Can I just like unblur this area? Oh, so cute. 
Uh, <laughs> if you've seen my sketchbook tours of the original Magna Girl comic, this is an homage to that. It's a gooey earthworm. Okay, I found what I was looking for. So this is as far as I got. You can see I made it quite a ways. I'm trying to see, did I like actually start? <gasps> I did! So here's the next page if you were wondering what happens next. We have Maggie coming up to her mom and she's like, mommy, say something. Mommy? She grabs her face and like twists it towards her and oh, I changed that face. That's not, there we go. <laughs> Do you see the difference? I went back and redid it, but yeah. So a knock comes from the door. Daddy, she says as she runs to the front door with a sliding stop. Hi, daddy. She opens the door. So there we get our first appearance of Trevor. And then it looks like I might've done the next page. Okay, so then we have Holly. She says, Kieran, honey, as she walks towards the door, Maggie looking very pleased with herself. And then we have this scene where we got <laughs> Kieran and uh, Holly walking away from the door. Holly says, Kieran, honey, do you want to sit down? How are you? Would you like a glass of water? How about some cereal? I don't know how she would say that. That, that seemed really condescending, so maybe not like that. But then we have Maggie jumping in and kind of like replying to what her mom says. This happens to be her cousin, by the way. I don't know if that ever came up, but yeah. So then when she asks, would you like some cereal? We have Maggie miming eating it. She's like, yes, marshmallow cereal, please. And then it says, would you like to clean off and take a shower? Can I do anything for you, anything at all? And then Maggie's like, hey, remember me, mom, your kid. <laughs> Do we have the next one? Did I do that? Oh, I did this one. <laughs> this is exciting. Okay, so then we have Maggie and she's having a little bit of a tantrum herself. So we have Trevor, he's kind of taken off his tie. I think I forgot to color his beard line art. That looks ugly. <laughs> Anyway, Kieran seems to be in shock. Maggie says, what makes him so special? Besides being especially dirty. Maggie's parents are doting over Kieran. They say, we're here for you. And Maggie is confused by this behavior. She's very upset. Now let me see, do I have another one? Oh, I have one more page. So now we move on to behind Kieran. Maggie, why don't you check on Gigi? Make sure she isn't getting into any trouble. So this kind of like spins Maggie's emotions on a dime, we'll say. So she's like, oh my gosh, yes. And she runs out of frame. Now I feel like he was on the other side of the couch, but somehow he's made his way around here and sat down and Trevor says, I can't say Trevor without thinking Trevor. <laughs> anyway, we've got an extra room, a space just for you. We could paint it any color you'd like. Thanks. And you can see in the background, Maggie running off back into the kitchen and we have a little family portrait over there, which I didn't like the way it turned out, but it looked fine when I shrunk it down and just put it in the background. And then I don't think I have the next one. It shows it as a Photoshop file. So I can probably boot that up and see where I left it. Okay, so I almost finished it. Um, we can read it from here and then we'll go to the thumbnails. But anyway, Maggie turns her head to the sides. She says, that's weird. You usually have gotten into some sort of trouble by now, but you're exactly where I left it, you. With like a side eye confusion and she climbs up and grabs uh, Gigi's boyfriend and says, what the heck is going on today? So she's catching on, something's up. So now I wanna show you the thumbnails. So these are like the quick first jot down of an idea, which I found came kind of naturally to me. I was able to like do these exactly as you see them and it kind of just worked. They usually turned out exactly like this. Maybe because I just didn't feel like editing them. That's probably more likely. So we left it off on this page. You kind of see, these all look exactly exactly the same of what I did. But I had like a file outside, like a Word document and I had all the text usually. So I would just use that and I would input the text into here so that it was all in the same place. So now she's standing in the kitchen and she says, Maple had to leave before dinner. Then mom cried harder than when I skinned my knee. And that hurt a lot. Then my cousin comes and steals my mommy and daddy. And now you guys don't even need to be rescued. So she's kind of summarizing the issues here. Gigi's boyfriend now says, so he'd be using those speech bubbles with like the blue and it'd say, your mom and dad seem to like your cousin more than you. Maggie replies, that's not true. If they wanted another kid, they would have a cute little poopy baby, not a big ugly big kid. Unless maybe they didn't realize that they wanted another kid until they saw how cool Kieran is. Yeah, right. And then she kind of like thinks about it for a second. So basically she's having a conversation with herself. And then she thinks the coolest thing he could do is reach the soap above the laundry machine. And then Gigi says, well, I know that I'd rather play with him over you. And then <laughs> Maggie shaking Gigi. Well, maybe I'd rather play with Kieran instead of you mean toys. Ha, huh, he's too cool for you. Yeah, Kieran would literally never be friends with you. Yes, it will happen. Just wait. 
I'll show you. Pops is the toys. Kira and I are gonna be friends and I won't need you anymore. We are your favorite toys. <laughs> Smack. And then she lands in a very precarious position. You're, you're not cool without us. Maggie screaming. I'm not gonna have time for toys like you once Kieran and I are friends and we will be cool together. She's got some unrealistic expectations. So now she runs out of the kitchen, pushes Trevor out of the way. Whoa, excuse me, daddy. And then Holly's still talking to Kieran. Do you want another pillow? Dot, dot, dot. I'm gonna get you a pillow. Maggie <laughs> standing. So this is her standing next to Kieran now. She waits for a minute when he doesn't say anything. She says, Hi, Kieran. I'm Maggie, your cousin. Remember? Dot, dot, dot. That's gonna be a trend here with him. We see each other every Christmas and Thanksgiving and at parks and at camping at Uncle Colin's house and dot, dot, dot. Well, see, I just thought we could be friends. Dot, dot, dot. And as your friend, it means I'm gonna have to tell you things. Things you don't always want to hear. You know, like... You smell bad. Just like a camping. You smell like a big old bonfire. Kieran shows a little more emotion now. He gets very, very angry. And he just pushes Maggie straight off the armrest. Just shut up. That's my boy voice. <sighs> Maggie nursing her elbow. Holly has now returned. And she tells Maggie to get off the floor. I still need to vacuum. And she says, Kieran pushed me. Holly, you must have bothered him. Go, go check on Gigi. I already did. They're acting weird. I think they have it in for me. Holly, that's complete nonsense, Maggie. How about you play in your room with your other toys until I call you for dinner? Oh, and don't touch the outfit I've set out for you. That's for your first day of school tomorrow, and I don't want you getting it messy before we even get there. So she's a little short with her. She wants Maggie out of the way, I guess. Which seems like a weird reaction now that I'm thinking about it. Like, it's like, wouldn't you want, like, all your loved ones close after a serious traumatic event? But we continue. So now Maggie is continuing her tantrum, and she stomps up every single step. I really love this sketch, just the weight of it. It really looks like she's angry and she wants anyone downstairs to know it. Anyway, then she gets into her bedroom and she slams the door. I remember being really nervous about like, how the heck was I gonna draw this? Because like you're seeing her inside the room, but you're seeing the door shut from the outside of the room, but it looks great as a thumbnail. Works just fine. <laughs> anyway, inside her room, she's shaking and she looks down at her feet and she says, I'm too upset to play. Sits down on her bed. How long until dinner? She looks up at the clock. I can't tell time. <laughs> so she falls back onto her back. You kind of see her outfit for school tomorrow. She lays down on her bed waiting. Tick tock, tick tock. And we see it's 4.45 p.m. At 5.45 p.m. she's now on the end of her bed. Now she's on her bed rolled up in all her covers and she moans at 6.30. I'm a mummy. You kind of see something I found interesting or something I tried to do was like each panel sinks lower and lower until the last panel were underneath her bed. She's fallen off the bed. <laughs> She's still in her blankets and she says, it's okay monster under my bed. You can go ahead and eat me now. And we see it's 7 p.m. Now it's just 8.50 a.m. She's sleeping on the floor and she is awoken by her growling stomach. Whoa, Mr. Tummy, that was a good one. She looks up at her window. <gasps> it's tomorrow. <sighs> She comes around the edge of her bed and sees the outfit. That means big girl school day. So now we jump to the next page and she is showcasing her brand new outfit as she walks into the living room. Mom, daddy, dig on my new outfit. They're all asleep on the couch. Kieran's still wide awake staring straight in front of him. Maggie, mom, dad. Holly wakes up. <gasps> what is it, Maggie? Her, her dad wipes some, uh, I don't know, those little eye boogers, morning eye boogers out of his eye. She stands puffing her chest out. Do you like my kindergarten outfit? Holly, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong? I thought I looked quite super. Crap, 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 crap. She looks at her phone. It's 9.04 a.m. She grabs her husband's shoulder. Class started at 8.55. She was supposed to be there 10 minutes ago. It's her first day, Trevor. So now we go to a little montage of like a waffle being pressed into the toaster, peas being snatched, lunch being packed, waffles popping out of toaster, keys twisting, Maggie's seatbelt clicking, mom's seatbelt's clicking, and you can see she's like holding her waffle. I really like that one. <laughs> and then we cut to the inside of the car. Holly lets out a uh, breath of air, and then Maggie leans over around the edge of the seat and says, I've waited my entire life for this. So now we'll turn the page. So each red thing is like a page turn. I specifically like mark those so that I can see spreads or that I can see like, they say when you want a scene change, you should wait for a page turn or specifically aim for a page turn. So as you turn the page, you would now see like all her classmates, dot, 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 and her teacher. That's not an eye patch. It's just a poorly 
drawn glasses. <laughs> yeah, then we see Maggie speechless. Ollie gives her a kiss on the top of the head. Good luck, honey. Her mom leaves. Wait. No mommies in kindergarten? And then our last page. I'm Miss Kara. Why don't you come sit over here? Dewey was just explaining how he collects earthworms. Oh, remember that kid? <laughs> Aw, cool. With a crunch of the waffle. And then after that, things like you'd think would slow down, but there's a scenario at school. But yeah, so there's a lot of pages that I didn't do yet. This was around the time that I just kind of realized I didn't really want to make comics anymore. But I had a lot of fun with it when I was doing it. And I feel like just reading through them, just knowing like where it's supposed to go and all this stuff is like really exciting for me. But yeah, there's the rest of the pages that I made for all the people who've wanted to know what happens next. I just want to share it with you because I didn't want it to just like fester on my computer because I know I'm not going to come back to this. I have other things in my mind, but I did want to share it with you because it's something I'm pretty proud of, to be honest, and I wanted to show you. So I'm going to send you back to the table and I'll send you off with a few final comments and some things I want to tell you. So yeah, that's all I ever got to as far as like a comic for Magna Girl. I have not abandoned her. Actually, Lately, I've been working on her story a little bit more. Things have changed, but like this still very much envelops her character. And most of it is very similar, especially like the next issue. Not much changes, except that I've decided that I don't know children that well. At least like children growing up in today's era. So I've decided that she actually grows up at the age I was. So it's gonna be taking place in more of the early 2000s. That's probably the biggest difference really. I thought it'd just be easier because then I can relate to her a little more and I don't have to like research. <laughs> what are the kids into these days? That's the plan. Let me know if you're interested in it because it is something that I definitely don't really want to give up on. I think we're just going to move in to a different format of storytelling and maybe one day I'll be able to share it with you. I always hate talking about it because I'm like like I'll go through these really strong spurts of like it's all I think about and then I leave it for a while and then I feel guilty but like that's just real life. I'm gonna talk about what I'm interested in at the moment and this is it so I'm curious to know if you're interested in this format of story like I know it's definitely not for everyone like it's basically slice of life so far. Obviously later on in the story it gets a lot more serious and action-packed but it was meant to be like a story of like watching a child grow and how the influences of having superpowers would affect that. Makes it a much longer form story. So I was just wondering how many people out there are interested in something along those lines. Just to gauge some interest. Not promising anything. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you guys all next week. I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!